Welcome back. The other day I saw an interesting thing on the web and I wanted to see if I could show you guys how to duplicate it for low cost. So let's jump into it. So I saw something on the GAP website just a few days ago. I'm going to put it up here on the left hand side of the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. And essentially what it was was a nice motion graphic of a girl walking through with the product and wearing the product. I thought it was a really cool way of displaying a product, especially when you're trying to show clothing or apparel items. So what got me thinking about how they did this and how you could possibly do this with a transparent background. Now, the first thing I did when I started putting this together is I had to create some video that would allow me to erase the background. So if we hop over to my screen, what we can see is I've gone and created a, a blue screen video. So if we pull this up here, we can see that it's got me in front of a blue screen and then I'm able to chroma key out the blue screen and be able to create an image that has nothing in the background. So I'm going to walk you through the steps of what I did to do this. Make it so that you guys can create your own version of it and we can come up with something similar. Now some of the benefits of doing it this way is it allows us to one, swap out the background color to be whatever we want. So if we don't have a fancy photo studio, and we want to be able to change the background on our website, we don't have to match the color of the backdrop that the model is watch walking on in order to match the look and feel of our website, which can be very hard to do because of color temperatures. The, the wall, in order to uh, get to the right temp temperature of the branding and the images and stuff like that. So it's easier to do it with no background. But then the challenge becomes, how do you put a video on the web when alpha channels aren't supported? Now, uh, you can do that through HTML5, but not everybody has HTML5, so we need to do this backwards compatibly. And the way we're going to do this is with a GIF file. So the first step that I needed to do was I needed to create a chroma key. Now there are lots of tutorials online. I'm not going to go into uh, super depth on how to do uh, blue screen here. Uh, I just want to show you that I've gone and created an object that has an alpha channel and, a, and nothing in it so that we can um, get the product that we're looking for. And more importantly, I'm going to go through the export settings of what we need to do. So if we have a look here uh, for Premiere and we have a look on our timeline, we can see I've deleted the audio. I've changed the aspect ratio of this image to be one by one, um, mostly because it's going to be viewed on a mobile phone, uh, we want it to be the right height. Um, and in the um, effort, we have a lot of blank space on the right and left. Um, because this is going to be swapped out only on the mobile side of things, uh, we can leave it as square. Uh, the problem that one of the problems that I did have is when I was doing um, the, the chroma keying, we can see here there is a bunch of shadows. Um, and the shadows mean that there was a different color um, that needed to be keyed out. So I did some keyframes which, which um, fade between one setting and the other to give me a perfect chroma key of the entire video. So I don't have any weird artifacts showing up when I went and did this. Okay, so we've gone, we've chroma keyed out our object, we've now got our blank uh, slate essentially with no background. Now what we need to do is we need to go and export it. So I went to export media and these are the settings that I use. So the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to choose QuickTime because QuickTime allows you to export a video with an alpha channel. There are a couple other options that you can use. This one, because we were going a GIF file, it was uh, not a problem. So um, down on the video codec, we wanted to switch this to animation. Uh, switching this to animation allows you to have the option down below of the 8BPC plus alpha. This is important. You need to be able to export an alpha channel with what you are doing. All right, I want maximum render quality, um, and then I've just picked my file. I'm not exporting the audio because you can't have autoplay audio on a mobile phone. Um, natively through a web browser anyway, so we don't even need that. And we want to keep the file size as low as possible. So I went and exported this file as a movie file. Okay, great. Here we are here. We have our movie file, which is essentially 250 megs. What I then did is I went and I moved this file into Photoshop. So if we go into Photoshop, we open up the file. So I went into my folder grab the file, and open it up. Now it's going to take a few minutes to load because it's about 500 megs. 
We then have the image in here, and now we can see as we scrub through, it has a transparent background and looks beautiful. Now, one of the things we're going to need to do is we're going to need to resize this. Because it's exported at 1080p, it's too large. So we want to go to image, and we want to go to image size. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change this to more reasonable size. So we're going to change this to 380 pixels by 380 pixels. We're going to hit OK, and it's going to go and convert the layer to a smart layer and resize our image. Now what we can do is we can go and, we can go and export this as a GIF. So if we go uh, Command, Option, Shift, S on the keyboard, we get Save for Web. Uh, it's important to use the Save for Web because we want to preserve all the transparency and all of the settings, and this dialog box allows us to do that. So first thing we want to do is we want to select a, a GIF file. Um, we want to select our color palette. Uh, now we want to use adaptive because the color palette is potentially changing as you walk through the scene. So you want to be able to adaptively change the uh, colors that are available. Then what you want to do is you want to make sure uh, transparency is selected. And then you can go and hit save. Now once you save this file, um, it's going to generate you out your GIF file. So then if we go in here to our Final Cut GIF file, we can see it's 2.8 megs. Now, 2.8 megs is a little large for a, um, a GIF file, but in the scheme of the objects that are downloading on the internet nowadays, it's not too bad. So what we're going to do is we're now going to go into our website. OK, now once we're in our website, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to Products, and we're going to upload that GIF file that we have. So if we click on Products, and we go to the product that we've created. Now, I've already gone and done this so that you can see the little animation is showing up in here. Um, but we're going to go in and we're going to upload the image. So we're going to upload the image. It gives us a nice, clean view of how things are going to look. And then once we save that, we can go and view it. Now, what I'm going to show you here is when you come to the page, you get this nice movement. You get a clean background. And when you resize it and you come down to the mobile side of things, there's no play buttons, there's no status bars, it's just a clean image that you can have putting on here. Now you can have all sorts of different things. You can have it rotating if you don't want to have a model. You can have a zoom effect where you're using it with your camera. You can set up boomerangs because boomerangs would work good on a product page. It gives a little bit of movement and catches the eye on a mobile device. One of the other great things about it is now if you want to change the background color or the texture, you're now able to go and do that. So let's just quickly go and swap that out. Now when we reload it and we have our color, we can see a little bit of artifacting in here. And if that's the case, what we would want to do is we want to go back in and keyframe that out a little bit, maybe put a mask around it. But for the purpose of the demo, it works just fine. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for coming by. I hope this was helpful. If it was, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you want to get notified every time I upload a new video. New videos come out every Thursday, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day.